In homework 10.3, we return to the data that we saw in 10.1, the spring 2020 data, data for which we already know the answer. Put in the count. Put in the difference from A to all the way down to, wow, too far, wow, a little bit. Down to A, 43. So that's the same date, A2 to A43. So the mean, same mean, won't be any different, equals the average, as 10.1. It'll be different from 10.2, of course. But we've gone back to the 10.1 data set. Probably should use a different data set here. But uh, I'll have to get back in the classroom and throw some more paper airplanes, I guess. What's the point estimate for the population mean? Well, my best estimate is a 441. If I don't know anything else, that's my best estimate is my sample mean. If I have more than one sample, I could use two samples. Maybe I could even argue that I can now use 10.1 and 10.2's average. Take the average of 441, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. For this class, the point estimate for the population mean is our sample mean. The sample standard deviation, that's easy to do. A2 to A43. Sample standard error, this should be the same value as we got back at the... Uh, I will be seriously surprised if I get something else. 52, yep. Now, I expected a population mean of 560, so the null hypothesis is that the population mean... This mu is kind of subtle, the mu in this here. You, because you think it leeling. You told me the population mean is 560, so duh, the population mean is 560. What, what are you talking about? This mu in this little equation is slightly different. <laughs> Sorry. That mu is the possible population mean for the sample. We mean for the sample. Could the sample's population mean be 560? Remember, this is a rigged example where I happen to know the actual population mean. But we don't usually know that. The alternate hypothesis is that it is not 560. You might be wondering, gee, I see H0, H1. What happened to H2, H3? Um, well... We're only testing two hypotheses, a null against a not null. So we only have a zero and one. If somehow we had more hypotheses, I'd guess there'd be more of these, but we don't usually have them. We're going to run at a 0.05. So let's go with the T-critical, just to, at this point, more practice than anything else. ABC button, T-inverse, alpha, a risk of a type 1 error, 0.05. 42, we've done this one before in 10.2, uh, 201, it's just a different value, and we did it in 10.1 also. The absolute value of the T statistic equals the ABS of, don't forget the parentheses, the sample mean minus the 560, which happens to be there, divided by the standard error. Click in the right place. 228. Remember, in 10... If I don't know if you remember. But in 10.1, we had a statistically significant result. We we rejected the null hypothesis. 560 was not in the confidence interval. We get the same result here. The T statistic is bigger than T critical. But the point of 10.3 is we can now calculate a new beast. The p-value. Why are we calculating the p-value? Uh, where'd it go? Nope, sorry. Yep, 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 back, 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 back. Mistake. I make mistakes when I'm not thinking. Ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> Let me try to type it manually. It is the absolute value of the, the... It says X. What it really means is the absolute value of the T statistic. I don't know why they put an X there in the formula you see there. The degrees of freedom, that's easy. For us, that's a 42 minus 1. And then the tails. Two tails. Why two tails? Let me go ahead and enter that. And then come back to it. 
There's a real simple answer for two tails. I just got to go find it. Right there. Because the normal distribution has two tails, one on the left, one on the right, there's a possibility that the value is lower. There's a possibility it's higher. There's a possibility things got worse. There's a possibility things got better. Left, right. It's two different tails. The left tail, the right tail. These things there and there. Those are the two tails. To do a one-tailed test, which some people do, means you're ignoring the other side. There are some limited conditions under which that's valid, but it's safer to always use a two-tailed test. Now, all the p-value tells us is whether we should be surprised. Did the water stay in the glass? <sighs> and if it's below 0.05, we're surprised. And this is below 0.05, so we're surprised. Shocking result. Breaking news. Someone get a hold of CNN. We have an unusual, unexpected result. We are below 0.05. That's the key thing to remember. In this world, smaller is better. Below 0.05 better. Why shouldn't say better? I retract that. Less than 0.05 is significant. We are below 0.05, so we reject the null hypothesis. Is a sample mean? Yes, it is statistically significantly there. Yes. <laughs> for this one, for this is this other data. This is a spring 2020. The airplanes that didn't fly very far, remember? Could the sample have come from a population? No, it could not. No. And again, to help you, there's these down here. When the p-value is surprising, less than our chosen alpha, we reject yes, no. Just what you see me doing up here. So these answers, it says it'll be the same as 10.2. That's not true. I've got to fix that. Don't worry, I'll try to fix that. Uh, when, I get, uh, when I get back to a desktop, I'll delete that in the original version of this particular file. It isn't. I changed the date in 10.2, and I should cha eventually change the date in 10.3 to get some new calculations. But again, the idea is you can see some of the parallels. Now here we're using the example of paper aircraft, but we could be testing a new drug for medical research. We could be testing a new type of fertilizer or a new farming method. We could be testing a new curriculum in a classroom. We can apply this to a lot of different things besides playing with paper aircraft. I just like to use simple examples. Plus, with the paper aircraft, I know what the population mean is, and for most systems, we don't. This p-value also will become important because in Chapter 11, we'll have a function that simply gives us a p-value and nothing else. <laughs> It'll go direct to the p-value. And so understanding that this thing is surprising below your chosen alpha will be important. So that's 10.3 uh, in, a, in a nutshell, uh, um, as it were. And uh, do work it. I want to see functions. Don't copy my numbers. Make functions at work because it's the functions that will work as long as you've got the correct data selections that will work for other sorts of data besides this data.